This is a Node MCU board uh, with the ESP8266 chipset, the little uh, Wi Fi Internet of Things device, driving a 74HC595 shift register. And uh, it's doing so using the SPI port built into the ESP8266. So uh, coming out of the D7 pin here, we've got um, essentially the data signal going to the shift register. So that's the master out, slave in uh, connection of the SPI port on the ESP8266. And coming out of D5, we've got the clock line. Uh, so that's the, um, the SPI clock coming out and clocking the uh, shift register of the 74HC595. And lastly, just coming out of D2, we've got a, a latch output. So that's not actually using the uh, functionality of the SPI. We're just using the SPI uh, module to produce our data and clock pulses. And then the latch is uh, handled by manually uh, pulsing the, um, the D2 output here on the node MCU. And so that's uh, connected to the latch pin on the 74HC595. And uh, as you can see, all I'm doing is writing out data, uh, basically counting up from 1 to 255, or from 0 to 255, and shifting that data out. So it's basically doing a binary count here. Things are a little bit um, in reverse order here, so you normally read a number from right to left, but you can see that the, the least significant digit here is pulsing and uh, very frequently, and then to the right is the most significant digit, which is uh, updating more slowly. So yeah, that's it. Um, nice to see it working. Really not much to it. An LED array to show the, the output here, a uh, resistor array here, with 330 ohm resistors all tied to ground and the 74HC595 and three data lines connecting up to the, the Node MCU module here. So a neat little proof of concept that you can drive a shift register using the Node MCU or any ESP8266 really with enough pins uh, to break out the SPI port. So taking a, a look at this, um, what we've got is this, uh, these are the three connections coming out, uh, all outputs from the Node MCU device, and uh, then we've got our shift register here, a couple of um, things connected to ground, so of course pin 8 uh, on the HC595 connected to ground, and also output enable is connected to ground, so the outputs aren't in a high impedance state, they're actually uh, connected properly. And then up the top here we've got uh, a 3.3 volt supply going to pin 16 and a 3.3 volt supply also going to pin 10 which I haven't marked here but is the, the master reset pin. So by holding this high it keeps this HC595 out of reset, keeps it functioning normally. The 3.3 volt line is just being taken off the Node MCU device. And then we've got the outputs going to the LED array here. So uh, the least significant output is on pin, pin 15 of the 74HC595. And uh, then the more significant outputs count up from pin 1 to pin 7. So pretty easy layout here to wire up. Pin 9 is used to chain more of these shift registers together, so you can keep extending the shift register by chaining together multiple 74HC595s. I'm not doing that here. This is just a proof of concept, so I've just got a single device. And uh, the other end of the LEDs, so the cathode side, the side you connect to ground, is then being connected through to ground via this resistor array. You could use your own resistors if you wished, uh, discrete resistors. The array just makes it a little bit more convenient to wire up. But uh, discrete resistors would be entirely satisfactory. So that's it. Node MCU, driving a shift register. Good proof of concept. 
I'll apply this in one of my projects shortly. script that I've used on the Node MCU device to implement driving the 74HC595. As you can see, I set up the latch pin here to BD2 and I've uh, set the mode for that to be an output and set its initial state as low. I then set up the SPI, so I call SPI.setup uh, SPI um, ID number one, set it up as SPI master, so this is uh, driving the SPI bus, the node MCU is driving the SPI bus, set the clock polarity to high and the clock phase to low, and set it up for eight data bits, so we're pushing out eight bits of data along the SPI bus. This last parameter here, I'm not quite sure what it does, but like some of the other parameters here, uh, other options aren't, aren't really implemented. So I just whacked a zero in here and it worked fine for me. I print the result. Uh, if this is successful, it should return a one and it does in practice. And um, here just uh, looping forever. So while true, I then enter a for loop that counts from uh, one to 255 and print the current value and subsequently send that out the SPI port. So that um, initiates a, a series of uh, data bits, uh, sets, sets the, the data line, the uh, master out um, slave in line to be the, the appropriate value for the bit and then pulses the clock line. And once we've written a full eight bits of data out, I then uh, wink the uh, the GPIO pin, the, the latch pin, and that just means that the data is registered. After that I set the watchdog timer to be cleared and uh, issue a delay of 100 milliseconds before uh, putting out the next bit of data and so uh, that yields a, a new value out to the shift register every 100 milliseconds and so that's why we see quite a quick update of the LEDs.